Hello and welcome to another video of Appelhome.com. My name is Joost Appelhome and today at the Top 3 Pens series we have a very special guest. We have a former minister of the Dutch government. First, he was minister of culture, science and education and after that he was also minister of interior and kingdom relations and now he is an entrepreneur. So, Mr. Plastek, welcome. What are your top three pens? My love for pens, I think, goes back to the fact that I was just about, probably last generation, who learned how to write with this dip pen, right? And then later on, you got ballpoints and everything. But, uh, and since then, I've, that has always stayed with me. So later on, I wrote, you know, as editor-in-chief of our new sp uh, school uh, paper and, and would write, you know, was, and this was the cover of it, draw with a pen, of course. And, uh, you know, we drew, I was a fan of Bob Dylan, so I wrote, I don't, all of this was, was drawn with, with dip pens. You know, I think here's a, you know, <laughs> you know from a cover of, a, of a, an album, of course. But so since then, I've always had that dip pen love stay with me. So I spent a little time in politics a few years. And then you really have to have, go for convenience writing because I had to write in the back of a, of a car, you know, being driven through the country. So I had these, you know, two pens, you know, one for the regular notes and then to correct the errors of the civil servants, a red pen. And uh, so I, I, I teased them a little bit. I said, I take the thinnest tip possible so I can write as many, correct as many of your errors as, <laughs> as you make, right? Which is a lot. So, um, so I've been using those uh, for a number of years, but of course there's no joy in the writing per se. It's just for convenience. So. Um, now that, I, now that I can, I have my own desk and I, I can write the way I like, I've, I've you know, really picked that up again. Um, initially, actually, I wrote some pens for my investors when I started my company a couple of years ago with a dip pen. And I found that they really appreciated the fact that it was, was written by pen, right? And visibly by pen, because with the dip pen you can certainly see that. Because there is this line variation, right? If you, if, even without noticing, you can immediately tell that it's written by dip pen because if you, the swing of your movement will give you already a little bit of breathing in the line. So it's, it's, it's not a, a, a line like this, it's really uh, variable. I'm not a calligrapher, so I don't try to you really you know, do, do all of that, but, but even the natural movement will give you that line variation. So I've looked for fountain pens that will do that. And that brings me to my three favorite pens. So one, and I, I have it in two colors and two colors of ink, but comes uh, from, uh, they're called Desiderata, um, and they're called by Pierre Miller, who is a, a man who used to be, I believe, a jazz musician and made a career change. He's in Chicago, and he makes these beautiful pens, and they're beautiful per se, but, but the trick is that, his trick is that you put a G-nib, which is a, dip pen used by others for calligraphy but you put it into a fountain pen and it works precisely the way as a dip pen so you have immense line variation um, most of which I don't use because I only like the fact that if you write naturally that you get a little bit of breathing in, in, in your line width. Um, the only disadvantage of these pens is that the nib will rust so after a couple of weeks you have to put in a new one, but you know they're they're fairly cheap. You buy them by by the by the box, and and, uh, and so other than a little inconvenience, it's really a, you know I would certainly say a favorite pen. Now that inconvenience goes away if you have a pen with a permanent nib, and this is this is a Leonardo pen by itself, but the nib is made by Jose Minuera, who is uh, is a very is a. a Characterful guy who works in Dublin, um, and I met him at a Utrecht pen show recently, um, and a long beard and tattoo, so it looks like a Viking more than, than what you would expect of a. Of a um, but anyway, he's, he's a beautiful draftsman, and he makes these pens that are almost as flexible as a dip pen. For the flexibility to work, you have to keep the ink flowing. So he's found a trick where he puts an overlayer over the pen you know, for an extra flow, and it's well balanced, and it works beautifully, but, but you know, it's, it's a permanent uh, 
fountain pen. Um, and along those lines, there's a third pen, which was made. It's also a Leonardo pen by, by itself, but there's a gentleman called Les Sheely, also in the United States, who also makes the nibs flexible. I must say, you know, there's two sides to it. It's a little bit less flexible than the others. The good news is that it will also write on, you know, garbage paper. And sometimes they, they, they ask you to sign a, a piece or a document which is really printed on, on Xerox paper. You know, and a real pen lover, of course, doesn't write on Xerox paper. But this one manages the Xerox paper. So those, those are my three pens. I, my favorite ink is, is a purple one. My favorite paper is, is Japanese and uh, Midori. And uh, um, yeah, OK. And with that, I write. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Really appreciate it. Thank you.